Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to another video and today uh, we're going to be going through a little bit of a team build that I built. Uh, should be costing under 50,000 coins on both Xbox One and PS4 as well as a couple money making methods on how to make coins in NHL 15 even though it's just about the end of the year. It should still apply to about NHL 16 too but for now I'm just going to be going through NHL 15 and a couple coin making methods for those people that only have just about five or 10,000 coins. So first of all, I'm gonna keep this intro very short in the beginning. I'm gonna be going through a full rerun of the team in just about a couple minutes, as well as team strategies, and as well as the coin making methods before we go into fully explaining this team. I want those guys that only have a couple minutes to be able to build this team and not watch this video too long. So anyways, my whole team is Cogliano, Boyle, Grabner, Gabrick, Eric Stoll, Evander Kane. We got Ryan O'Reilly, Valtteri Filpula, Darren Helm, as well as Voracek, Johansson, and Felino. And on the defense, we got Bowmeister, Varlamov, Shattenkirk. We got Carlson, Green, Giordano, and Aaron Ekblad. And then backup goalie, we also got um, Steve Mason in the back of the net, if you don't know who he is. He's on the Philadelphia Flyers, and he has a right-handed catching glove, which a lot of people use that goalie. So I'm not, I'm not too worried about the goalies that much. I mean, a lot of people use different goalies in different situations. So just try out whatever you think that you like in your team but after showing that I'm gonna go through the power play lines quickly you guys can probably see the background of the players uh, but you guys can quickly scroll through you can pause the video anytime you want and uh, you might as well just copy this team build it's pretty easy to do and uh, I don't want to go through it too long because there's a lot of people that actually want to watch the full thing as well so let me just go through it and that should be just about it so we're gonna be going through team strategies now and for this team uh, I really based it off speed and mid-sized players. I really hate using really tall and big players in this game. Players like Zidane Chara, players like Tyler Myers, they're just a little bit too tall for me and a little bit too hard to turn around those players when I need them in very, very hard situations, right? But anyways, team strategies, you guys can see here, forward line one, forward line two, and they're pretty much all the same except the efficiency is boosted up just a little bit more for each one. Line four, efficiency is boosted up quite a bit, and I put that don't block on zero for all the time because I want my players to block it all the time. I'm pretty sure that's what the slider means. And for defensive pairings, they all look like this. The bar hold line at max, as well as cycle, all the way just about max but not all the way and uh, that's pretty much it for the strategies now we're going to go into how to make some coins all right guys so i'm going to slow it down just a little bit i want to get rid of the team build out first just in case those guys already know what they wanted to do they already have the coins and they were going to build a team build right away but we're going to go into the browse auctions page and show you how to make some coins and for this year at least or i mean it's about july of uh, 2015 which means the game is just about to come to a close and the thing is uh, most money making methods in this game are already saturated unfortunately there's no good ways to make 200 300,000 coins in a day and uh, that's a little bit unfortunate but you can still make coins a little bit on the side if say you want you only have like five or ten or twenty thousand coins these method make money making methods are for you so for the first part if you say have under 5 or 10k coins you want to first of all buy some contracts so contracts right now go for quite a bit you want to buy these during mega packs or when a new card comes out a lot of people like to dump their contracts for very very cheap prices and uh, I usually like to put the buy now maximum to just about 500 I like to just search the page and whatever is on there definitely there's nothing right now but it's really late at night as well so I mean you want to do this around prime time when everybody's on people throwing up contracts for 400 300 each sometimes really really cheap prices and you can resell these contracts for above uh, 750 each buy now or buy now maximum at least so I, I'm just gonna show you here like, I mean the buy now ranges are pretty crazy and if you really wanted to you could buy out not the contracts that are 650 you won't be making too much profit off those but if you buy some contracts for 500 each sell them for about 650 each you make a total profit of 150 each which, which is about a 20 percent increase in your coins right there so you invested all your coins in contracts you're going to make 20 percent more coins when you sell everything and these things sell like hotcakes i'm telling you you put it at 650 when a player premium pack is out 
you're going to be making a ton of money. I, I promise you on that one. And sometimes when a player premium pack comes out or a rare player pack comes out, you can maybe even sell contracts for 800, 900 each. It's absolutely ridiculous sometimes, especially when this game is so late in the age. And then the next method here as well, when a mega pack comes out, a pack that has a lot of consumables, which is like training cards, a lot of head coaches, a lot of gold stuff, you want to buy some change teams for under a thousand coins and you can find a lot of good deals on the market for sure. What I like to do, raise that buy now minimum to just about, I would say a thousand fifty, maybe eleven hundred, search the market and then I just like buying some change teams. So right there you can see there's some really cheap uh, Florida change teams, 850, 900 buy now. You can easily price these up to 1100, 1200 each when a player premium pack comes out. Even more actually, you can actually price those for 1400 when a player premium pack comes out, and you make can make a very decent profit off this method. And this is more of a more I guess advanced method for those guys that have say 50 or 60 thousand coins that can buy out say 50 change teams. Sorry all at once they can make 50k within a week or they can make about 100k within a week it really is up to them of how much money they want to invest and change teams i don't like to spend more than a thousand coins on chain teams at all so you want to be smart about buying and selling buy when there's a buy change teams when there's a mega pack out sell these change teams when there's a player premium pack out that only includes players and you'll make a decent profit so there are a couple money making methods right there you it's always going to take a little bit of time to do these methods they're not instantaneous unfortunately if it was instantaneous everybody else would be doing it so take your time with these methods do a little bit of training and eventually by nhl 16 you'll be rich Okay, okay, I know we're still on the team strategies here, but I want to bring you guys a little bit of a quick disclaimer on how to use them properly. Because going in with a pre-planned strategy doesn't exactly work for every single opponent. It will be able, this, I guess this strategy right here is definitely a good way to figure out your opponent. But once you're in game and say you're starting to figure out that, you know what, you, it's really hard to beat your opponent or say you're having a hard time defending their attacks, uh, I will basically show you how to change them in game. So. Quickly, if you guys don't know how to change the strategies, uh, you want to use your directional pad on your controller for PS4 and Xbox One. It looks kind of like a cross, I guess, and clicking any of those buttons in any direction will be able to change those strategies. As well as clicking B or X in-game on your Xbox One controller, or clicking square or circle on that PS4 controller. I'm pretty sure that's right. I don't have a PS4, but clicking those will be able to change your strategies as well. So you got to be careful as well. It might affect your poke checking. I know it's a pretty big problem in NHL 15. I know a lot of people have that problem, but anyways, we're going to be going into uh, how to, I guess, attack your opponent a little bit harder. So 1-4 is great for figuring out your opponent right off the bat. If you say figure out exactly what they're doing in the defensive zone, don't be afraid to switch that to 1-2-2 two, two red. Your guys will play a little bit more offensively, and you might catch your opponent off guard and score a couple goals like that. So 1-4, I like to keep it on that starting off. Neutral zone, don't be afraid. Say you're uh, winning by 3-2. to two. There's only 30 seconds left. Do not be afraid to defend the lead and par uh, park the bus or protect the net, I guess. Uh, I usually like to put them all on max uh, because... In the beginning of the game, I want them all to be attacking and not defending. I'm not trying to defend the lead right at the beginning. So keeping those on full attack high pressure in the beginning is good, but you might want to lower those a little bit later when you have the lead. So going to defensive strategies here, everybody plays a little bit different. I just want to point that out. Some people love to do cross creasers. Some people absolutely love to do, uh, I guess, uh, circle around your zone and wait you out until they can get a shot or some people like just to use defensive uh, Defense to shoot the puck or some players on the outside to shoot the puck I'll tell you exactly what you need to do for the defensive strategies for five on five and five on four if you're on the penalty kill So defensive strategy is collapsing and passive box are great for cross creasers. All right Okay, so tight uh, staggered and large box are great if say you want if say a guy is circling around your zone staggered and large box is the way to go your guys will attack the player and make sure that they don't give him any opportunities to just circle around and wait you out that that is more of the passive box and collapsing if you leave it at that people will circle around your zone all day long and going to tight point and diamond tight point is great for those guys it doesn't get used very often in NHL 15 for me at least but tight point is say people just like to shoot with say Zdeno Chara and Shea Weber guys with amazing shots from the point put it on tight point and your guys will block the shot every single time I already shown you the team strategies my guys will block the puck almost every single time as well the penalty kill is a very very risky one all right 
Once again, if you know that their defensemen are shooting the puck very often, the diamond is a very way, good way to combat it because one guy uh, at the top will attack the passing lane and you might just get a breakaway with the zone. But if you miss it, you might be stuck on a 5-on-3 in your own zone and that can end up on a pretty bad goal. So it doesn't get used often. But if that does happen, the diamond is a very good way to do it. But just keep it like this. Uh, this, this is just a basic... Uh, strategies you want to go in with every single game and then you want to change them on the fly uh, inside NHL 15 games. All right, I'm going to slow down my voice again. I'm just getting way ahead of myself for these videos. But anyways, I'm going to be going through the team a little bit slower for those guys that don't exactly know which team these guys are playing on. I know there's a lot of new players that just bought the game or just got EA access and they don't exactly know who Cogliano is or Grabner and where to find these players. So I'll be going through the players nice and slowly and you guys will be able to see uh, why I like these players and why they are on the position they are in. So why they are on first line, why these guys are in second line, third line, fourth line, etc. All right. So the first line includes uh, Cogliano. He is playing on the Anaheim Ducks. He's on the left wing two-way forward. A very, very speedy player, just like Michael Grabner. He's got 89 skating, and you can find him on the New York Islanders. He was one of the fastest players in both NHL 13, 14, a very fast player in NHL 15 as well, but his checking is a little bit on the lower side, which makes him a weaker player. But alongside with Brian Boyle, I put a plus, I put two plus nine skatings on him, one plus 15 duration, and it cost him just about 5,000 coins. And you can use him for 16 games uh, with this boost. So it is actually pretty crazy. I mean, 16 games is a lot of games. I mean, 10 games is about 200 minutes. So 16 games is just about. Uh, you guys can calculate it yourself, but it's a lot of game time and by the time you use up Brian Boyle You'll be like, yeah, you know what? It's probably time for a chain or it's probably time for a plus nine skate on Brian Boyle and another plus 15 duration You probably won't even notice uh, when it runs out So the second line here is a Vander Kane, Eric Stahl and Marion Gabrick. So a Vander Kane He is playing on the He's playing on the Winnipeg Jets in NHL 15. I know he was traded to Buffalo recently but you can find him on the Winnipeg Jets. He's a sniper uh, on there. As well as Gabrick, he's a sniper as well. He's a right wing sniper on the Los Angeles Kings. Sorry, I'm going through the teams. Uh, they have some chain teams on them, so I'm a little bit hesitant about seeing what their team is. But Marion Gabrick, you can find him on the Los Angeles Kings. A very, very speedy player. All those guys from Hut Roulette or guys that play NHL 15 altogether, these guys know that Marion Gabrick is one of the better players. You guys can look at the comment box below. Next up, Eric Stahl. I know a lot of people have never even tried out Eric Stahl in this game, but I highly suggest you try him out if you have a very cheap team build. Uh, you guys can definitely use him in Division 1, one of my favorite players altogether, and you guys have to try him out for yourselves just to see how he plays. So the third line is more of my Hut Roulette line. I highly suggest also that you check out some of my Hut Roulette episodes for some goal scoring tips. I go through some gameplay as well as some team uh, changes and you guys will be able to see the full, uh, I guess, run through of my team as well as how I'm playing. So Ryan, Ryan O'Reilly, he's on the Colorado Avalanche. He's a left wing two-way forward and you can find him for a pretty cheap price for under a thousand coins. Uh, Darren Helm, one of the fastest players in this game um, for sure. He's a little bit on the smaller side. Once again, he's like a Michael Grabner, a, not really a Cogliano, more of a Michael Grabner, Darren Helm. I don't exactly know any more small guys that are fast like this, but Darren Helm, he's on the Detroit Red Wings, and you can pick him up for under a thousand coins. Next up, Valtteri Filpula. All you guys know, he's a very good goal scorer, and he's 87 overall as well. You can pick him up easy for a thousand coins, and uh, definitely a very good third line center. Fourth line, Felino, Johansson, and Voracek. These guys are more of my penalty killing, as well as some goal scoring, uh, I guess, lineup here. Voracek, a very good goal scorer, like you guys know. You can find him on the Philadelphia Flyers. Uh, Ryan Johansson and Nick Foligno, both on the Columbus Blue Jackets. Foligno, a little bit of a hidden gem for me, at least. He's a very quick player, and he is pretty big as well. 6'2", 210 pounds. Get some stuff done in the defensive zone, as well as the offensive zone, which I really, really like. Ryan Johansson. Altogether, a very good centerman, very tall guy, 6'3", 223 pounds, definitely want to try him out. And that is just about it for the offense, so let's go into the defense. Alright, so for the defense, it really is up to you. There's a lot of great defenders in this game, and unfortunately, there's only 6 spots. And I decided to give you guys a little bit of an in-depth review on my defense. So, I only like using guys that are mid-size, guys that are around 6'2", 6'3", just around there. 
any bigger. It's just, if there's a guy like Patrick Kane on the other team or a Pavel Burry, you will run against those players. Uh, they're, they're way too fast and they will beat your guys like Zidane Chara or Shea Weber every single time. So I like very fast and mid-sized defenders. And this is what I ran with. Jay Bomeister, you can find him on the St. Louis Blues. A left defenseman, two-way defenseman, and a pretty good player altogether. You can pick him up for a couple K, a couple thousand, I mean. K means thousand. A couple thousand uh, coins. I know some people don't know that exact term. But next up is Kevin Shattenkirk. You can also find him on the St. Louis Blues. A right defenseman, two-way defenseman. If you pick both of those guys up in the correct team, uh, you will also get a little bit more chemistry as well. And in net, we got a couple goalies here, all right? So first of all, I don't uh, I don't recommend any goalies in particular. I would rather go for a player like Ben Bishop, but Ben Bishop goes for about 10 to 15K on, say, Xbox One and PS4. So I went for the goalie that I found was the most strong that I faced against. And Semyon Verlamov is definitely one of those goalies. He's very cheap, 89 overall. You can find him on the Colorado Avalanche, and he's one of those really good goalies that you should try to pick up if you kind of ran out of goalies to use and you kind of lost hope. And then the second line defense, we got Mike Green and John Carlson. Both of these guys are on uh, the Washington Capitals, both right defensemen. And uh, I like to put Green on the left side for those slap shots. He's got a better shot than Carlson at least. And uh, so I put Carlson on the right defenseman, more of my... Uh, stay back home defenseman playing alongside with Mike Green and for the third line defenders We got Mark Giordano and Aaron Ekblad You can find Giordano on the Calgary Flames and you can find Aaron Ekblad on the Florida Panthers So why I like these two players Giordano once again a very solid overall player a little bit shorter than Jay Bomeister, but a little bit uh, more agile than Jay Bomeister as well six foot 200 pounds definitely cannot go wrong with him as well as Aaron Ekblad I've actually not tried him that much uh, this year, but he is a good right defenseman that I've played up against a lot of players. And uh, he is just a solid overall guy. He's six foot four, 216 pounds. It's not easy to get around him, especially with Mark Giordano playing alongside with him. It's not a very easily beatable defender pair, so definitely want to try that out. And in backup, we do have uh, Steve Mason. Once again, another goalie that I get stopped by a lot, so... I'm not going to guarantee that these guys are going to stop you a lot of goals. You have to play some good defense in order to do that. And I showed you some team strategies on how to play a little bit better in the offense and defensive zone. So you definitely want to try that out. And Coach Samuels in the, I guess, head coach spot gives you a plus two in every single stat. You can find him in the marketplace for under a thousand coins as well. And that is pretty much it for this team update. You can copy my exact lineup. You can copy my shootout lineup, my three-man PK. You can do whatever you want. But I basically just wanted to bring you out this video for those guys that only have about 50 to 100,000 coins that are kind of just... Uh, kind of running down NHL 15, just want to play some games and not necessarily needing to build the best team overall because honestly, it is very, very hard to build a team with, say, Pavel Bure, people like Stamkos and Ovechkin unless you buy packs. And uh, I, I, this is just a way to make coins and everything legitly, or not legitly, but uh, just manually, I guess, and you don't have to spend your real-life money on buying this team. Obviously, you'll speed up the process, but it not necessarily means you'll have a better time playing this game. It's pretty fun just going through uh, NHL 15, working the market, and then building a team nice and slowly. And when you get those contracts from that last um, money-making method I told you guys about, definitely use those contracts on these players. Uh, they're very, very cheap, and I mean, if you save up a couple, you should be okay for putting up contracts for all those players. I was trying to figure out some contract glitches as well, which I could not really find. So unfortunately for you guys, you do have to put contracts on your guys. But pretty much, that is just about it for this video. I hoped it helped. I know there's a lot of guys that are more advanced that have, say, 2 mil, 3 mil coins. You can definitely check out my other coin team builds that are 2 mil, 3 mil team builds on my channel. And you want to definitely subscribe to me if you want to see some more NHL 16 uh, team builds that are very cheap as well as very efficient and how to make some more coins as well. All right, I'm wrapping up this video. I'm talking a little bit too much. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. See you guys later, and I'll catch you guys later. Bye. Oh, beautiful goal. I knew he was waiting for the shot trying to poke it off, but we do cut in with Quadru making it 4-1. Beautiful goal.